All right, continuing on with the 2010 AMC 10B problem number 21. It was also the 12B problem 11. Also, uh, my wife made me this shirt from a t-shirt store for my birthday coming up here pretty soon. So yeah, got a cool new shirt that rocks my channel. All right, anyways, here we go. Uh, a palindrome between 1,000 and 10,000 is chosen at random. What is the probability that it is divisible by seven? So it's between, so it's gotta be more than a thousand. Let's just, well, go up one. A thousand and one is a palindrome. Okay, what's the last possible number? 9,999, that's also a palindrome. So we're in this range. Let's kind of think about how are we gonna find all of them? Obviously it's one, 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 and one, two, two, one, all the way down to one, nine, nine, one. And then you will do 2002, two, one, one, two, all the way down to two, nine, nine, two. Um, this will go all the way over to 9,009 and all the way down to nine, 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 nine. Okay, so let's think about this now. We need to accomplish, uh, how many are there? You could say that there's 10 in this row and there's nine rows, so there's 90 total. Um, what is the probability that's divisible by seven? Um, I think if we just start with 1,001, uh, it's 700 plus 280 plus 21. Those are all multiples of seven, so this is a multiple of seven. Then we wanna think about what are we adding to get to this one? We're adding 110, which is two times five times 11. There's no seven in that. And in fact, if I do any multiple of 110, it's not going to work if I add 210s unless the X, the multiplier is a seven. Because if I'm starting at a multiple of seven and I'm adding another number and it's not a multiple of seven, then the overall number will not be a multiple of seven. So we know that a thousand and one is going to work as is one seven seven one because that's seven multiples of 110 later. If we think about it, if we add a thousand and one to a thousand and one, we're gonna get the exact same situation in this column with 2772 being the other one. In fact, since every column will have this, oh, how do we know 2002? Because it's two times 1001, which we know that's a multiple of seven already. So if you think about it, there's two ways you could finish this problem. They're both about the same. Uh, you're gonna get two in each column and there's nine columns. So that's going to be 18 out of 90, which is one fifth the answer. But you could also have just said, well, every column is the same, so the probability in this column is the same for the whole thing, which would also be two out of 10, which will be one fifth. So that's the end of the question. I'll see you in the next one. All right, continuing on, this is the 2010 AMC 10B problem number 22. Uh, this is gonna be a counting problem. Uh, if you're looking for to gain skill at this type of problem, I highly recommend the Intro to Counting and Probability from Art of Problem Solving. Fantastic book if you haven't done it yet. After that, you can do the intermediate one. Um, seven distinct pieces of candy are to be distributed among three bags. Okay, so the important thing is they're distinct, so they're different. All right, the red bag and the blue bag. So we've got red and blue. Um, must each receive at least one piece of candy? The white bag may remain empty. So there's a white bag as well. It's very American. Um, the may remain empty. How many arrangements are possible? Okay, so what we can apply here, I believe you would say this is actually a case of principle of inclusion, exclusion, but a really simple case of it. Um, if we just think about the pieces of candy, like consider them A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. There's seven of them, right? They're distinct, so we have different letters for each one. How many choices do I have for where A goes? Sometimes, if it says must receive at least one piece of candy, uh, you should maybe forget about that part and just assume there's no restrictions, right? See what happens if you did it that way, and then try to subtract the cases that uh, didn't qualify, the ones that you know didn't have the red and blue bag with at least one piece of candy. So if there's 
A, it's got three choices, and B will have three choices, and C will have three choices. Well, that's simple. That's just 3 to the 7th. So if there were no restrictions, you would get that. Um, 3 to the 7th is 2187, as 3 to the 6th is 729. It's uh, 9 cubed, 27 squared, all those things. Okay, so then we now need to subtract all the ways that blue doesn't get any candy and red doesn't get any candy. So pretend for a second the red bag is empty. It's got nothing in it. Then all of these pieces of candy will now only have two choices. So we can just subtract two to the seventh. Furthermore, if the blue bag is empty instead of the red, then there will again be two to the seventh choices. And if you just did this, well, they've got an answer for you because that's wrong. There's still something else we have to consider, and that's that when we counted all the ways for the blue bag to be empty, we actually included one way where the red bag was also empty. And we did that for both this count and this count. So that case where all seven of them end up in white was counted twice. Once for the empty red bag and once for the empty blue bag. And since we subtracted it twice, we need to add it back in once because it shouldn't have been subtracted twice. That's the principle of inclusion, exclusion, where you subtract and then add back in um, the part that you over subtracted for. So two to the seventh times two is really two to the eighth. Two to the eighth is 256. So I want to subtract 256. I'm going to add this one to get 2188 minus 256. So 8 minus 6 is 2, 8 minus 5 is 3, Tw uh, 21 minus 2 is going to be 19. It will be 1932. See you in the next one. All right, this is the 2010 AMC 10B Problem 23. It was also the 12B Problem 17. The entries in a 3 by 3 array include all the digits from 1 through 9 arranged so that the entries in every row and column are in increasing order. How many such arrays are there? Uh, don't spend a lot of time you know, thinking just yet. Make the array some kind of three by three, almost like you're gonna play tic-tac-toe but with the extra box around it. Um, obviously, this has to be one and this has to be nine because it's increasing going this way and this way. So if there's anything but one here, it won't work, and anything but nine here, likewise, it won't work, because then nine would have to go somewhere else, likewise with one. So we know that has to happen. Um, we also know that this middle block, right, is going to have to be either four, five, or six. Uh, for instance, if we try and put three there, what number would go here and here that's less than three? Right? So it's only going to be able to be 4, 5, and 6 there. Uh, let's erase that so we have some space to work. By the way, I'm going to do two endings on this. Uh, two endings. One's going to be kind of a longer method, a little bit tedious, that you would do if you can't think of the shortcut. And then afterwards, I will do the shortcut. Okay, so we have three cases, basically. Case one will be where this is a 4. I don't want to redraw the whole thing. So if this is a 4... This number, this number, and this number must be 2, 3. Actually, no. 2, 3 must go in one of these two spots. So each, each one must go here and one must go here. Because if I put, for example, 2 here and 3 here, 5 would have to go here, and 5 is not less than 4. So because of that, um, we get two choices for the arrangement of 2 and 3. Let's say I put 2 and 3 like this. There's two ways to do that. Um, okay, so then what? We've got to place 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the reality is you've got two spaces here that it has to be increasing and two spaces here that it must be increasing. There's really no restrictions. I mean, it's kind of, there's kind of restrictions, but we could just do of these four, let's choose two of them. If I choose, say, 5 and 7, then it could be 5 and 7 here, and by default, 6 and 8 will go here. It doesn't matter which two you pick over here. Even if it's 7 and 8, for instance, that's fine. You would get 
7 and 8, that's increasing, increasing, increasing. Just put 5 and 6 here and everything's still increasing. So it really does work. 2 times 4 choose 2, 4 choose 2 is 6. That's going to be 12. Uh, we should guess that by symmetry, it's probably the same when this is the 6, because that's kind of the reverse situation with the restriction being more towards the 9, like the 4 is towards the 1, closer to the 1. So again, 7 and 8 are going to have to go in these two spots right here in order so that um, if you put 7 and 8 here, the same thing happens if we didn't put 2 and 3 there. What are you going to put here that's bigger than 6 now if you do that? So then clearly 7 and 8 must go in some order, either 7 here, 8 here, 7 here, 8 here. Therefore, there's two ways. Again, you're going to have the same thing, but the numbers are 2, 3, 4, and 5. You'll pick 2 to go here. The other 2 will go here by default. That's also 4 choose 2. That's also 12. Okay, so that leaves, this is where it's going to branch off. We're going to go through two ways now. One a little bit longer. Oh, why did I draw that there like that? I can, okay. Um, one a little bit longer than the other. So if I put the 1, 5, and 9 here, um, you can kind of play around. You know you have to have two numbers uh, between 2, 3, and 4 that have to go here. Two of those numbers have to go here, or two of them have to go here. So if I do the one where they go here, it'd be 3 choose 2. And I, for my money, I'm just going to make three of them. This is the long way, by the way. I'll cover the short way in a second. 1, 5, 9, and 1, 5, 9. Then we will put 2 and 3 here, 2 and 4 here, and 3 and 4 here. It's got to be those in some order there. The reason is, or actually it doesn't have to, they could have gone down the column as well. But they definitely couldn't go here, right? No 2, 3s, or 4s could go in this position. Um, so if I go this route, uh, then 2 by default has to go here. Once you select the 2 that go in that upper spot, the other number by default must go here. And that leaves, so there's, there's going to be three ways to choose the two numbers up here, right? Three choose two. And then I've got seven, eight, and six left. And basically for all of these, it's the same. Pick one to go right here, and the other two have to go in increasing order right here. Therefore, there's three times three is nine ways to get that. Um, so three choices for what goes up here. Oh, why three times three? Yeah, so three choices there, three choices for this number being a six, seven, or eight. Now, what if we did them going down the side, like the two, three here, instead of going this one, putting them over here? I should get the exact same scenario with four being having to go right here. There will then be three ways to choose the two numbers to go here times the three ways to choose this number with the other two going here by default. That's 9 plus 9 is 18. Add 18 to 24. 24 plus 18 is going to give 42. Now for the shortcut. But is it really that much of a shortcut? This didn't take that long. Probably it adds 30 to 45 seconds to the calculation time. So uh, this is just listing out and figuring out how many there are that way. Um, the other way that we could have done it is after you get to uh, 159 setup, then you have 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. And when you think about it, you need to choose three of them that go here. And whatever three you don't choose to go there, they have to go in these three spots. So if I simply do 6 choose 3, that will be 6 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial, that becomes 5 factorial, as 3 factorial is 6, over 3 factorial, 5 times 4 is 20. But we actually only are supposed to get 18, we know from the other method. This is why you got to be careful if you use shortcut ways. Why is there 20 then? We need to get rid of a couple. It's going to be the case where the numbers 2, 3, and 4 are selected here, here, and here, because none of those numbers could go there. And likewise, if I, chose, if I chose that set, or if I chose the 6, 7, and 8 to go here, 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 that seems like it's going to be, actually you can't, because 6 can't go in this position, nor can 7, nor can 8. So actually, these two selections of a choice here don't work. 
And so we have to subtract those two from the 20 to get 18. But you have to think a little harder for this one. So that time that it takes you to come up with this and be confident in it, I almost feel like most people could do the listing, you know, a casework kind of method a little faster. Answer's 42. See you in the next one.